This is a video for AQA Discrete Mathematics, Critical Path Analysis, Section 2.4, Leveling Resource Histograms. Well, the idea of resource leveling is to use the diagrams that we've found so far to see if we can reduce the number of workers that are required overall in a project, or also to study the effect of the time if we don't have enough workers at any particular point in a project. So this can be done to make sure that we are efficient with the use of workers and hence save time and money. So here's an example of the project that we've been looking at in the series of videos. And what we want to do here is to decide can we do this with only two workers? This is a situation where we had one worker required for each activity. And we can see that at the moment, between time 2 and 5, we require three workers because we've got C, B and D going on at that time. But the part of the Gantt chart which shows the non-critical activities, we can see that if we move D to start at time 5 and therefore move F along so we're going to delay D and F by 3 hours then the project in total won't be delayed but what will happen is that F will now come into this position and D starting at 5 and having a duration of 7 will finish at time 12. So we've now literally leveled the resources so that D is no longer here but by starting it three hours later we only require two workers for the whole project, a maximum of two. Now that was possible because D and F could both move within their float times. Another question we might answer is, what's the minimum number of workers required for a project, assuming that it's going to finish on time? Uh, the way we drew our resource leveling diagram to start off with had a maximum number of workers here of 8. But we've got the possibility of moving some of the activities and see if we can reduce it. Well, the first point that we could look at is at the end here, where if we move J this part of J from here, so if we get rid of that and put it into here, then J becomes a single block and at this point we've now reduced that to five workers. So what we we'll do is, can we actually get down to five workers in the first part? Well clearly that's not going to be possible because we've got this overlap here of D and E but what we can do is, as before, move D and, e, uh, and F to be three hours later, so that F would now finish here. And starting at time 12, so that's F. And then D would now be in a block like this instead of here. So no we can't get down to 5 at the start of the project however we can reduce it down to 6. The second part of this then is going to say well okay let's say we have got a maximum of 5 workers indicated by that red line that obviously we know we can't do within the time constraints of 27 but we can now consider how much extra time would be required if that is a constraint on the project so we've only got five workers available we know that we can handle J by putting it in this position so that one's not a problem and what we now need to think about is what happens to D in this area here where at the moment we've got eight workers required. We know we could get it down to six workers by 
moving f along to this position as before and putting that block for d in here but then to get it down below 5 we're going to have to move e now that means that e has going to have to move to start at time 12 to produce a hole here for this block for D to fall into. So that means that the start of E is going to be delayed by four hours and of course E is on the critical path as we know and therefore the whole project will be delayed by four hours. But we can do it as long as we get four hours extra needed. Well that completes this video on resource levelling and also completes the series of videos Critical Path Analysis 2.